Sarah Brady of Iron Fire. I'm here just before the 2023 at UTMB with Courtney DeWalter. How are you doing? Great. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Stop raining for a few minutes to do this anyway. <laughs> um, so we last interviewed you just after the Hard Rock 100 back in July. So where you won that and broke the course record just three weeks on from doing the same at Western States. So I know you were really like psyching yourself up for that double, but I don't think then you had decided or announced at least that it would be a triple. So um, when did that decision come about and how? The double turned to a triple uh, in mid-August. I did not have, or start of August, I guess. I did not plan to uh, do all three races going into the summer. I knew that the two by themselves were a huge challenge, and um, I had no idea what I would feel like after finishing Hard Rock. And so it was like a seed planted that maybe I could try three if I feel good, but uh, definitely wasn't counting on it. After Hard Rock, I was really wrecked. Hard Rock was difficult for me this year, and so I took a good amount of time not running, not really doing anything except uh, eating ice cream. And um, then a couple weeks after Hard Rock, I went for a little jog, and it felt okay. And I was like, Kevin, we have to try this. Like. The opportunity is so rare to get to do all three of these races in one summer. We have to try and just see so that we know, you know, it's, there's no wondering then what would have happened. We, now we get to find out. For sure. So it's the challenge then of doing all three rather than this race on its own. That's kind of bringing you here, is it? Absolutely. Yeah. The challenge of adding this third one on is... Um, it's big and it's unknown. I don't know how my body or mind are going to react during the race. So okay. that's what uh, is really drawing me to go for it and see because I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, for sure. That's really exciting. Um, and then so apart from like that initial time where you just like fully took time off, did you ever get back up to full volume training weeks or was it just kind of easy ticking over after that? Um, a little bit of everything. So I was lucky enough then to come over here for a Solomon training camp on the UTMB course. Almost immediately after I decided to sign up, I uh, left for Europe to um, tromp around the course in four days, which was huge volume and climbing, um, but a nice chill pace and like snacks and, you know, taking pictures and just enjoying the route. Yeah. Um, so I did get back up in some mileage, but it was still definitely straddling the line of what's recovery, what is training, like how am I actually feeling and can I push the gas or should I just try and, you know, arrive to the start line healthy and rested. Okay, so still super relaxed anyway. Yeah. Um, and then like, is that was that your first time being on the course since 2021? Yes, and I had never done it like this, so... Um, the parts we do in the night during the race, I'd never seen in the daylight, okay. all of Italy, basically. Um, yeah. And that was so beautiful. I'm so yeah. glad I got to see the course like that. Yeah. Um, but it was the first time I've been on it and the first time that I've actually trained on it. Okay, super. Um, and were there any like particular surprises, like any part of the course that like stood out in those days? Um, I think... I couldn't believe that you can see Mont Blanc from so many spots, yeah. especially those <laughs> night parts. Um, yeah, I was like, yeah. wait, that that's the backside right now? What? Yeah. It, you don't have time to look at it while you're racing. <laughs> no, no time to look. And it's been pretty foggy in yeah. both editions that I did mm -hmm. in certain parts. So it was just cool to see yeah. it all with fresh eyes and to share it with teammates so that when I roll through those sections, I'll have those fun memories to think of from yeah. when we trained on it. For sure, yeah. And then last time I seen you, you were seeing the crewing and pacing gig from the other side at the Swiss Alps 100, um, where your husband Kevin was racing. So how was that experience? The coolest. I uh, got to crew him and pace him a lot of miles on the Swiss Alps course. And he was a machine out there. It was really inspiring to be on the other side of it and just see him keep plugging away at this really tough course and pretty hot day. And uh, yeah, we made a lot of memories with that race that are very special. 
Yeah, such a fabulous place there as well. <laughs> oh man, magnificent. I'd never been and exploring new places with your feet is the best way to see them. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then just uh, to go back to your last performance here. So in 2021, you set the course record on the UTMB. So um, going into this weekend, would you be happy with like a similar performance? Or do you think there's still room for improvement on that? And if so, kind of where do you think that room is? For me, going into this weekend, I am hoping to finish. So I will be very happy to make it back to Chamonix. Um, I know there's a lot of room on that time. So I hope that women will you know, push it down farther and farther. And if that happens this year, that's awesome. If not, I know that it can happen. Okay. Were there any particular points on the route? I know, I think you had a pretty good day, but were there any points where you, you struggled on that route in sections that you think you could take minutes off? I struggled a lot on the very last climb, which is gone now, I think. Yeah, which funnily enough, <laughs> yeah. they've taken out this year. So I, I actually was thinking, um, because even when we did the camp a couple weeks ago, we skipped that climb. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't been on it since I, you know, zombie marched up it at the end of the race in 2021 and I was thinking this year like oh that's kind of cool you haven't been on it since then when you get there it'll be you know mm -hmm. new and exciting and I was coming in with this like really fresh positive attitude about that climb yeah and then they were like oh we've taken it oh. out <laughs> so um, that's fine yeah um but yeah I think if someone came into the race you know and could crush the climbing and descending and mm -hmm. all of the pieces there's room everywhere to okay pick up time yeah that replacement end section that they've put in sounds pretty great as well though I think it's like the end of the Mont Blanc marathon um have you run those trails before or is that just going to be a surprise on race day a full surprise and I'm leaving it that way I'm, okay uh, I like a little bit of uh mystery in a course <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay yeah that's super um and then after that, are you going to stick around in Europe for a while or are you heading home? Sticking around a little bit. I have some family coming over for the race, so we're going to make it um, a little trip afterwards and enjoy each other's company here in Europe and then head back to Colorado for the best season of all. Yeah, <laughs> fabulous. It sounds like you've had a pretty nice time here in Europe. You were in Italy just before this. Where did you go there? Uh, we were in the Aosta Valley. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh just in a little town eating pizza and yeah. going for walks around on the paths. It was nice and relaxing. Okay, yeah, perfect taper. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thanks so much. I hope you have a fantastic race and I'm sure we'll see lots of you out on the course. Thank you.